Hello, thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and being a part of our community and subscribing to our YouTube channels. In this video, we're going to talk about support cases. And in 2024 R1, Acumatic has enhanced the support case system. So we're looking at a support case right here. And you can see at the top of the screen, you got the case class, the status is open, and there's a reason for that because it's in process. Now when I close support cases, I want to give a reason as to why that case is closed. How did I solve it? So Acumatic has added, if we take a look at the case class, there's an option here, require case closure notes. So if we make that change here, and we close this case, you now get the ability to describe why this case was closed, or resolved in this case. And what this allows you to do is to highlight the reasons the cases are closed, and we could start to create a knowledge base out of this. Now, it doesn't have to be resolved for the reason that we're closing the case. It could be rejected or canceled or for whatever reason. But basically, these are our final thoughts on this case before closing it. So now what you see here under the cases is there's closure notes. So as you're looking through your case, you can open this up and see these closing notes. Additionally, what you'll notice if we open up that case class is there's now a new tab called Commitments. And if we take a look at this diagram, Acumatica is going to begin to start tracking time commitments. So you can see here in the diagram, you receive the support case, and then you send the first response to the customer. That's the initial response time which is also classified as a response time. There are many different response times throughout the course of a case. And then we're also going to be tracking the total resolution time. Now, if we take a look at this case class, you can see that you can have different targets for different severities. So when we look at the high severity and we enable this, we have the ability to put in a targeted initial response time. This is to say that the case is created. How long does it take for the tech support person to initially reach out to the customer? And we can track that and then compare to see what our performance is. Additionally, we can give ourselves a initial response grace period. So if we take a look at this diagram, you may have an original target time. But later, after the case is created, maybe you change the case severity. Maybe you change the case class. And in that scenario, so that we don't violate the target, we can provide a grace period, which allows the person handling the case the ability not to violate those target times. So let's say, for example, we have a four-hour target initial response time for a high priority and we give ourselves an hour uh, grace period. We'll save that. Notice the option here, we can stop counting time if the case becomes inactive or if a case solution is provided in an activity. That's a feature we're going to talk about in a little bit. Now, all of this is to say that we need a calendar in the system because we're not working a 24-7 shift necessarily. So when we take a look at our work calendar, if we open it up, you're going to want to make sure that this is configured correctly based on days of the week and based on working hours. In this case, the sales demo is showing a 24-7 shift, but if we switch over to for example, a Monday through Friday eight hour shift, you can see the differences here. Notice you also have break times. So you can put in different break times so that we skip over those times and don't count them as our targeted response times. And if we go back to this particular case class and we change to that Monday through Friday eight hour, now this will be assessed against this high target initial response time. 
Also notice the target response time. So this is to say how long after a customer asks an additional question, so not the initial response, but additional questions throughout, does it take for us to respond? So you can enable that. And if we scroll over to the right, now you have your target resolution time, which in this case, it's actually less than the initial response time. So you can tweak these numbers accordingly, depending upon the case class, which will indicate the type of work you're trying to do for this customer. Certain types of support may require or mandate a much faster response time. Now, earlier we talked about our ability to stop counting time if one of the activities has a solution in it. What does that mean? Well, if we go back to details, we have the ability to track solutions in an activity. So instead of just a case closure, we can actually check a box in the activity, and we'll show that, where that activity could be the solution prior to closing the case. Depending upon your workflow, you may only provide the solution in the case closure. But many times you may put a solution in there and then ask the customer for to tell you whether or not that solution is provided and then close the case later. So this gives you the opportunity to do that. So if we go back and look for a case that's still open, but also has that same case class. So we'll look for product support. Here's another one. And we go to activities and we create just a note, could be an email. Notice the case solution provided here. So we can check that box and now when we're looking at this case later, we can find the activity that's provided the solution. Additionally, if our case class has stopped counting because one of the activities has a solution, this will also go into effect as well. You'll also notice under the tab CRM info, under commitments, again, you got your initial response due, resolution due, you have all these statistics. But you also can see where the solution was provided. Solution provided here. Now, if you'd like to, you can select another activity and have that where your solution is provided. Notice all the first outgoing, last activity, last incoming activity, and last outgoing activity. All of these are useful for being able to track when things happened and when a case is going inactive, when we haven't responded to a customer's request. All of this information is critical. Now, keep in mind, while all of these fields are great, Acumatica, again, is tracking our commitments. So when is our responses due? We can see these fields here. Additionally, we can include those in the generic inquiry. So if I'm a caseworker, I could look at my cases and sort by my response due times. This is to ensure that I work on the cases that are most critical, where I have commitments that I've made to customers and to get those done sooner than later. You'll also notice that some of the work screens have changed. So for example, if I need to mark something customer pending, we get a pending customer screen here. And at this point, we can actually decide which activity, if we haven't already, the solution has been provided in. So the workflow screens will give you the opportunity to also work with what solution you've provided and when. Now, if we open up our Acumatica mobile app and we go over to cases, Take a look at this same case. We'll search for one, two, three. You'll notice some of the same things. Now this UI has been enhanced in order to, for example, take a case. If we go over to activities and we create a new activity, You'll notice that you also have that checkbox case solution provided. So now we can save it. And then it'll shift to this being the solution. Now, if we refresh, 
you'll notice it changed it to this solution being provided instead. Of course, we'll see the additional activity here. So that's it. So that's the case management enhancements that we've seen. The ability to provide a solution for a case, whether it's an activity or at the closure, and the ability to track time commitments based on initial response time or overall resolution time. So thanks again for watching this video and subscribing to our channels. If you have any questions about this or anything else Acumatica, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and have a great day.